Monica and thank you so much for tuning into my channel. In today's tutorial, I'm going to show you how to make this wrap skirt, which is a really fun skirt to make and wear. I really hope you enjoyed the tutorial and let's get sewing! To make this skirt, you'll need two to three yards of a medium weight non-stretch fabric that holds its shape well so the skirt keeps its flared shape when you wear it. I used this cotton lyocell fabric, which felt similar to quilting cotton. You'll also need two to three packs of half-inch wide double-fold bias tape, plus the sewing supplies I've listed in the video's description. To begin, we have to measure around our natural waist to see how big the waist of the wrap skirt needs to be. To do this, I started measuring a little bit off from my side where I wanted the skirt to start and wrap the tape measure around me, overlapping it just like a wrap skirt overlaps, and stopping a little bit before the opposite side where I wanted it to end, and I got 43 inches. When I wore the skirt, though, I would have liked the front to overlap a little more, so I'd suggest starting right by your side, wrapping the tape measure around you, and stopping right by the opposite side if you like a little extra coverage. Fold the longest side of your fabric in half and smooth it out, making sure this top edge is cut in a straight line so you have a perfect right angle at the corner. The skirt is made from a half circle shape and we have to do a couple easy calculations to draw it out. First, divide your measurement by 3.14. I got about 13.7. Then subtract a half inch from that number to build in seam allowance for the waistband and this number will be used to draw the waist of the skirt. I got about 13.2. Measure from the folded corner of the fabric and make a mark at the number you got, then swivel the tape measure down slightly and make another mark at that number. Continue this process of measuring from the corner and marking all the way down the fabric, then connect the marks with a curve and cut along that curve to cut out the waist of the skirt. Decide how long you want the skirt to be by measuring down from your waist. I wanted an 18 and a half inch length and add a half inch for seam allowance, so I got 19 inches total. Place the tape measure at the curve of the waist and make a mark at the number you just got. Move it down the curve slightly and make another mark at that number, and repeat this process all the way down the fabric. When you're done, connect the marks and cut along that curve to cut out the bottom of the skirt so that when you open up the fabric, you'll have a half circle shape cut out. To cut out the curve that goes around the front of the skirt, we have to cut a curved line like this on just one of the sides. To do this, start cutting right where the waist starts and cut a gentle curve down the fabric like so. When you get near the bottom edge, cut the curve slightly sharper so that it blends right into the bottom of the skirt. And if you're nervous about making this cut, cut just a little off at a time and check often to see if you're happy with the shape. To neatly finish this outside edge, we'll be adding bias tape around it, and the amount you need depends on how large that curved edge is. Mine was just under 3 yards, so one 3 yard pack of bias tape was enough for me for this step, but if yours is larger, you'll need to sew a couple packs together first. And although I'm using white, I'm gonna demo the first couple steps with orange just so you can see it more clearly. Lay the skirt with the wrong side facing up, and I'm zooming in on this corner to start. You can see here that one side of the bias tape is a little shorter than the other, so with that shorter side facing up, place it near the edge of your skirt. Unfold it once so that the shorter side is now closest to the edge of the skirt, then unfold that shorter side one more time so you can see its raw edge. Line it up with the curved edge of the skirt and pin it into place. Smooth out the next couple inches and pin it to the skirt again, and then continue this process, making sure each section of the bias tape lays flat against the curved edge of the skirt. I've switched from the orange to the white here to repeat that process of opening up the shorter side, smoothing it out, and pinning it down. As you work, you'll see that the bias tape easily curves around the skirt's rounded edges, which makes it a great tool to use on curved edges of non-stretch fabrics that can be difficult to hem otherwise. 
When you get to the sharper curve we cut for the front, really take extra time and care to work the bias tape around that bend, pinning often and making sure it's completely smoothed and flattened out around the curve. You don't want any places where it gapes or buckles. When you finish pinning, sew all the way around the bias tape to secure it, sewing right within this folded crease that's closest to the edge of the fabric. Use a straight stitch for all the seams in this tutorial and remove the pins as you go, taking your time as you sew around the curves to keep your stitches neatly within that crease. And now your bias tape is attached to the back of the skirt, which you can see up close here. Lay the skirt so the correct side is facing up and bring the bias tape around from the back to the front, folding it over so it's wrapped around the skirt. Since we sewed the shorter side of the bias tape to the back, the larger side is now on the front and it completely covers up the stitches we sewed. Press it down with an iron so it lays super smoothly and pin it into place. Go to the next section, bring the bias tape around to the front, and iron and pin it into place as well, and repeat this process around the entire outside edge of the skirt. Using the iron really helps to shape the bias tape around the curves for a smooth, neat look. When you get around to the sharper curve on the front of the skirt, you may need to take extra time ironing to get the bias tape and fabric to look smooth and wrinkle-free before pinning all the way down to the end. So to secure the bias tape to the front, this time keeping your stitches about an eighth of an inch away from the inside edge. I like using a matching thread for this step because it adds a nice finish and hides any potential mistakes. Iron the bias tape one more time for neatness, and you have a beautiful border on the fabric. To hem this straight edge, lay it with the wrong side facing up. Fold the fabric over about a quarter inch once, then fold it again another quarter inch and pin it into place. Continue double folding and pinning along the entire edge, then sew to secure the hem and press it with an iron. To make the waistband, measure around the waist of your skirt. Mine was 42 and a half inches. Then add an inch for seam allowance, so I got 43 and a half total. Cut a rectangle that measures that number long by 5 inches wide and set it aside. For the ties, open up another 3 yard pack of bias tape, fold it in half, and cut it into two equal 1 and a half yard strips. Sew along the length of each strip to keep the bias tape from unfolding, sewing right near the edge with matching thread. With the correct side of the waistband facing up, lay one of the ties onto the side so the bottom of the tie is one and a quarter inches up from the bottom of the waistband. Pin it into place and move the end of the tie so it sits below the waistband. Pin the other tie on the opposite side, starting one and a quarter inches up from the bottom too, and make sure it sits below the waistband as well. Fold the fabric down in half with the correct sides facing and pin that side together, then continue folding it in half, pinning the opposite side together too. Sew back and forth along the sides with a half inch seam allowance so the ties are super secure, Turn it right side out and use an iron to press the edges flat. Lay the waistband onto the correct side of the skirt's waist, lining up the raw edges of both pieces and pinning them together. Line up the next couple inches and pin them together too, and repeat this process around the entire waist. It can feel a little awkward pinning a straight piece of fabric to a curved waist, but just take your time, smooth out the fabric so all the edges line up nicely, and pin often, which really helps when sewing. Then sew them together with a half inch seam allowance. If your fabric frays, trim right along the edge of the seam allowance with pinking shears to help prevent fraying, being careful not to cut into the skirt itself. Push the seam allowance down so it sits below the waistband and iron it so it stays in place all the way around the skirt. When you're done ironing, flip the skirt over and sew a row of stitches about an eighth of an inch below the waistband seam, which secures the seam allowance to the back of the skirt and helps it lay neatly when you wear it. When you're done sewing, you'll have another nice finished detail. 
We have to make a buttonhole on the waistband to be able to tie the skirt, but don't be nervous if you've never made one. Wrap the skirt around your waist and go just past where the front of the skirt overlaps the waistband. Mark this point with a straight pin to mark where the buttonhole will be, and this is where the tie from the bottom of the skirt will come through the waistband to be tied into a bow. Go to that point and use chalk or another erasable fabric marking tool to draw a vertical line in the center of the waistband that measures three quarters of an inch long, which marks where we'll sew the buttonhole. The process for sewing them can be different on each machine, so make sure to read your manual for the specific instructions. I'll show you how I sewed it on mine, which has a four-step buttonhole system. To set it up, I put the buttonhole presser foot on, set the stitch width to 6, and the stitch length near 0 as my manual instructed. I placed the bottom of the marking I made right underneath the needle and made sure that marking lined up with the notch on the front of the presser foot to keep it centered. To start sewing, I put the stitch dial on step 1 and sewed several stitches, which creates a small post at the bottom of the marking. I then changed the dial to step 2 and started sewing again, which creates a long rectangle of stitches along the side of the marking. When I got to the top, I changed it to step 3 and sewed a few more times, which makes another small post of stitches, and finally I changed it to step 4 and sewed down to create the final side. It's all fairly easy, but I do suggest practicing first to get all the settings right, because I had to play around with the stitch length on mine to get all the stitches sewn evenly. Backstitch over the final side with a straight stitch to secure the thread, and now we have to cut the opening in the center. Start just under the top post of stitches and use a sharp seam ripper to cut the fabric open, being careful not to cut any of the stitches. When you get about halfway down, flip it over and start from the other side to finish cutting it open. To tie the skirt, wrap the tie from the bottom side around your back and feed it up through the buttonhole, pulling it tight. Then wrap the front over top and tie the ties into a bow at your side. Trim the ties to the size you'd like and finish their edges by double folding them a quarter inch at a time and sewing them down. And now you can rock your skirt. Thanks for watching. Uh, uh totally forgot what I was gonna say. I'm gonna be teaching you how to. S oh, sinking down into the sand. <laughs>